Erin James, congratulations on your performance in The Little Death. Thank you so much. <laughs> Bearing in mind that this is a G-rated radio station, <laughs> can you describe for us the part you play in The Little Death? Oh, wow. Okay. Um, well, goodness, that's a difficult... That's difficult on a G-rated program, no. Um, it's, I, I play a sign language interpreter uh, uh, who works at a call centre for uh, video relay services for the deaf. And I, uh, I have a phone call that comes in late one night uh, that is, well, rather risque, I suppose. <laughs> uh, is, that, is, that a, uh, is that G-rated enough? I think it's fair enough. Basically, yeah. basically a deaf guy... Yes. Calls your service because yes. he wants to have uh, he wants to have phone sex, and of course, much. He, and of course, he can't uh, he can't speak to the actual phone sex worker. So he has to basically go through you, and so you are in video conference with him. You can see what he wants, and then you verbally <laughs> translate <laughs> what he wants to the phone sex worker, and then she tells you what her response is, and then you sign the replies back to him. It's a very funny sequence in the it's film. It's a very cleverly written sequence as well. Um, and it's, I mean, just listening to you describe that makes me giggle. <laughs> um, and our wonderful director, Josh Lawson, and writer, um, did such a great job putting that together. And interestingly, uh, what I find actually quite amazing is that it's not an uncommon thing. I'm told. Um, he did some research into a video relay service uh, and he was told that it's, it's not an uncommon occurrence. Did you enhance your understanding of <laughs> this particular quirk of sexual human nature uh, or did you know all this already, Erin? Uh, oh, look, to be honest, the whole film was eye-opening for me. Uh, this particular one in my... The scene I was involved in, absolutely, I, I certainly wasn't really... Uh, up with that, I guess, but um, it, it wasn't just my scene. It was all of the different um, fetishes that were brought up within the within the movie that most of them I don't think I'd heard of before, uh, and it definitely sparked some interesting discussion uh, post viewing with a lot of friends of mine. And I think it probably has done that with a lot of people. Actually, it's um, it, it definitely got some dinner table conversation going. <laughs> Do you think that that's the main take-home value of the film, to actually get conversations starting on these topics? I think so. Well, I don't know if it's, if it's the sole purpose of the film, I think, uh, but it, it's definitely something that's wonderful that it comes out of it. The, the type of, um, you know, discussion that, that you would never normally have just sort of all of a sudden is something you can talk about. And I think that's wonderful. Isn't that what we do? It for? Like, you know, you create art to be able to stimulate conversation and, and discussion, and I think that's brilliant. The, the film has so much heart in it, and I think, I mean, it, it's obviously billed as a, as a sex comedy, uh, a comedy about sex, but really, there's, it, it's really actually a, a movie about relationships and how people deal with, uh, you know, being able to communicate. Mm. And I, uh, interestingly, the, in, in, in the film, the couples that do communicate openly are the ones that tend to have the most uh, success I think, in you know, in their storylines, and the ones that the couples that don't have that communication uh, are in a little bit of trouble sometimes. And even though the sequence that you're in involves a lot of dirty talking, whether verbally or through sign language, what, what do you reckon <laughs> is the main take-home value of your particular sequence, Erin? Well, I think it's definitely that. I think that scene is the heart of the film. Really, it's it's um. There's a lot of love going on in that scene. and it, I think taking away from it is the fact that these two people who are complete strangers, uh, you know, find themselves in a, in a situation that's just utterly ridiculous. And they, through, through this, you know, very strange situation, connect in a really interesting way. And it's that moment of connection and that, uh, you know, the little spark of something when you're completely open with somebody and someone really sees you just for a moment that I think that's that's kind of the heart of that piece that connection human connection regardless of the situation Erin how did you get cast in the film 
I, uh, I auditioned for it. There was a there was a casting call went out, and um, I just happened to have Auslan as um, a skill that I picked up for my first job out of drama school. I worked for the Australian Theatre of the Deaf for a year, and um, I had to had to sign as part of that job and to be able to communicate with the other actors that I worked with. So I, you know, I saw this call go out for an uh, actress with Auslan skills, and I I got the script and I read it, and I just absolutely loved it um i fell in love with it straight away and i thought i need to get this i have to get this so um i worked on the scripts and auditioned uh and eventually got called back to to uh, re- i was gonna say read we didn't really read to sign with tj power uh who happens to be a mate of mine and uh it kind of the rest is history i suppose and did you have any reservations about the script when you first read it oh uh, no i think Honestly, I think that a script that is that compelling on paper um, is just, it's so wonderful when you can't put something down. And it, it made me laugh and cry all at once, you know, within the space of not many pages, like 20 pages, I think it was. And I, for my scene, and gosh, I, I know that there were some interesting uh, things that I had to say, but... I, I was never worried about it. I was never concerned about it at any point, no. Now, this was your first film. You're mainly known as a stage actress. You've done Fiddler on the Roof and Love Never Dies, and I think you did South Pacific as well, and The King and yes. I and Cats. Yes. Wow, yes. you've done all this great work on stage, <laughs> yet this is your first film. Yes, that's correct. Why is that? Uh, I've been working on stage for so long, I had never really gotten into the, the film world, I suppose. Uh, I I love working in film. I, I think it's... It was absolutely one of the best experiences I've ever had. Yeah, I wanted um, to know what, what that was like, working on a film for the first time after all that <laughs> stage work. Well, and I think, although it is, um, they're very different crafts, I suppose. Like, there's, there's different techniques that you, you would utilise for both things. But they're, still, they're still similar in that the amount of preparation that goes into them is still the same, and you still have the same kind of... Um, you know, motivation behind what it is that you're doing. It's just that the scary thing about the film, I think, is that you know when you're doing it that one of these takes that you do is going to be captured and kept and it's going to be there forever. Where this, on stage, obviously, you know, it's gone in a moment. So the only thing that is that can be remembered by is in the, the mind of the audience who watched it at that time. So I think that that was terrifying for me, just this notion that, Oh my goodness, it's going to be there forever. Uh, but Josh was wonderful, and the crew, the whole crew, were wonderful with me. There were so many terms that I had never heard of. That you know, the language that is used uh, in the film world is is different to the theatre world, and they were that was so great. <laughs> we were kind of barking their instructions to the you know everyone else on set, and Josh would turn around and, and sort of tell me what that meant in layman's terms. So I kind of I learned as I went, um, you know. How, how the lay of the land was, I suppose. Has through this film whetted your appetite for more film? Oh, yes, absolutely. I, that's, I would love to. It's, that's exactly what I want to do. And what was Lawson like as a director? Uh, I think because he's an actor, he, he just gets it. He knows how to explain things to actors because he is one. Like he, he's, he knows how to elicit a response from you. He knows how to give you enough but you know, without giving, without telling you exactly what to do, he he can pull it out of you with words. He's very very clever, and he just he ran that that set just amazingly. Everyone just everyone worked so well together. The team was really passionate about what we were doing, and everyone was really excited about the film. Anyway, but to have it all run so smoothly and for him to be so wonderful was just the best thing for me in terms of my first ever experience on set as well. Like that, I was, I was very thrilled and very lucky to have him helm that film. I understand that fate had a part in the role that you played in the film. Interestingly, TJ, he actually called me a couple of weeks before I got my audition and said, hey, Ez, I've got this audition and I need to sign and I know you do Auslan. Can you help me? So I actually went to his house and, and he filmed me doing his dialogue um, so he learnt sign language initially through me. And then a couple of weeks later, I got the script and I thought, oh my gosh, I know this, I've read this before. And 
it was just so serendipitous that that was the way it began and then the way it ended up was with us uh, after all. Like I, th- I just think that's wonderful. That was such a cool little, I don't know, tidbit. With the magic of editing, everything looks absolutely seamless, but, you know, Lawson is there cutting between three scenes, so I want to know what the reality of the production was actually like. Well, interestingly, we shot it in such a short amount of time. Um, it was all... I think the whole film was shot in a, um, a 20-day period or something. Not, you know, nothing, nothing really, you know, in terms of time. Our scenes uh, at the call centre and in Sam's apartment were shot over two days. And they were actually, although, it, you know, they're two separate locations, really, they were actually just two, two rooms in the one building that they, they were able to deck out, like his apartment and like the call centre for me. And he... We were actually on Skype, uh, so we would call in every time. And TJ Power and I, the lovely TJ Power and I, would uh, be staring at each other down the computer screen for hours and hours at a time. And there were definitely uh, fits and giggles a lot. Um, We had the wonderful Genevieve Hegney on set reading her um, phone sex worker dialogue as well. So just adding the hilarity of not just Jen, but also Josh, and then the, the situation, it was, um, it was definitely an experience. 